everybody. Today's topic is uh, lasers use in dentistry today, which most of you know or you've heard me before. I'm a very practical dentist. I love technology. Technology is a wonderful thing, but it can be very expensive. And most recently, I was able to come across a product that I'm starting to use in my practice just about every day. And as importantly, my two dental hygienists find that it's a very useful tool. I've used dial lasers in my practice for over 10 years, but I found this tool to be most effective. And so I guess where I wanna ask you is, how are you managing soft tissue in your practice right now? Most of us would probably use a scalpel. We will use retraction cord conventionally, or some of us may still be using an electrosurge, which is a very fast and efficient way of doing it, but a little scary and a little dangerous at this time. So our topic today is learning about the use of the dial laser, and in particular the Denmat dial laser. And so our agenda today is we're going to learn some very, very basic laser information. We're going to talk about how this dial laser interacts with soft tissue why I think it's imperative that we use it in our practices. Um, it's a relatively inexpensive tool. And we'll do a little bit of comparison between lasers and traditional methods of retraction cord or electrosurge or scalpel, which will increase your usage in your practice. And as I mentioned, my dental hygienists are really finding it useful to break down calculus and or decontaminate socket sites. We found that we're getting remarkable results. And also, at the very end of the program, we'll talk about how we're treating aphthous and herpetic lesions, which our patients are coming back just saying we should have a full clinic just in that because the final results are just, just amazing. So let's talk about light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. That is the laser. Those are the initials for laser created by or, or the, the concept by our friend here. Unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to, uh, Albert Einstein didn't live long enough to see the applications of the laser today, but the concepts were demonstrated by this brilliant man. So what, what, do, what do lasers do? Well, they help us to cut lesions. They help us coagulate blood vessels. They cauterize nerve endings and they can sterilize wound edges. And I'm actually using it in my uh, dental implant correction or trying to resolve infections around some of my ailing dental implants. And the laser may not be the most efficient at everything in this list, uh, may, may not be the most effective cutter, but the additional benefits of this very small instrument, you can see it's just a little bit larger than a Sharpie uh, just an incredible instrument that's easily transported from room to room. And I find that it's very, very useful in my practice. So, you know, there's many, many different types of lasers out there. There's argon lasers and ND YAG lasers and CO2 lasers. And there's uh, hard tissue lasers like the erbidium YAG laser and the yttrium scandium laser, and they all have different applications in dentistry. And some of you may use these products in your practice and may be working very efficiently. But here we're going to demonstrate the use of the diode laser, which is a gallium aluminum and arsenic laser that allows us to provide the services that I'm going to demonstrate clinically throughout the program here. So the Denmat laser in particular are in the 110 nanometer range, which is not visible to the human eye. And you can't see the admission, but the laser energy is still working. And these lasers are not in the X-ray wavelength, so you don't need to be worried about harmful radiation to the skin. Uh, wavelength, as you remember from college or science, uh, is the distance measurement from crest to crest of a wave of light, and it's measured in nanometers. Most lasers, if not all, operate in two power levels, continuous wave or pulse. This is just how the laser is working. Continuous means it's giving off the same power outlook constantly. This would be used for all procedures that require cutting with an initiated tip, meaning we actually uh, take a cork and we char the tip. And this is where we can heat up the tissue and start to see some of the charring of the tissue. But the charring means you're overheating the area and we have the ability to lower the power to allow cooling of the system. The pulse mode, meaning it's kind of off and on and it kind of prevents that overheating of the site. And there's different indications for the different applications used uh, clinically. 
Uh, four things can happen to laser energy. It can be reflected. The reflected energy can be harmful to the eyes, and this is why we wear safety glasses. We can have transmitted energy, which could heat up under the tissue. We don't really want transmitted energy. We have scattered energy, which is effective for things like biostimulation of canker sores or herpetic lesions that I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit. And then absorbed energy is what we want for cutting. And this is what we use for removing of lesions or even for removing tissue as a retraction source for our final impressions. And so we do want to focus on the absorption of energy into our sites, which leads to proper cutting. The dial laser energy is absorbed, as you can see, by hemoglobin, melanin, water, or pigmentation. The laser is only attracted to soft tissue and will not be absorbed by anything else. The darker the pigmentation, the more attraction the laser energy will have. This is how a laser works and why it only cuts soft tissue and not bone. At its core, it is only attracted to these four main features, hemoglobin, melanin, water, and pigmentation, and only interacts with them. The 810 nanometer in the Denmat diode laser has a higher affinity to hemoglobin and melanin. It's kind of a confusing slide here, but it's important that you realize that this particular diode laser works best in a dry field. Some diode lasers are in the 980 nanometer range, and that those work better in a wet field. And that's why some of those lasers require irrigation during lasing. With this dead mat dial laser, we don't need irrigation. And uh, research shows that the 810 nanometer laser have better coagulation, where the 980 lasers cut with a smaller zone of necrosis. But however, that difference is negligible when you're talking about a difference of one to two cells. And that really, I don't think, is a big selling feature of a 980 nanometer laser over an 810 nanometer laser. So we can see what heat will do by laser energy. We'll get blood coagulation early on in the process, which is a good thing. So when we're using our dental diode laser, we don't see a lot of uh, excessive bleeding as we would with a scalpel. To coagulate, you can power the laser down and you don't need to risk unintentional cutting if you're only trying to coagulate something. You can always see where you're overheating the area and you'll get charring of the tissue. And if that happens, we have the ability to turn power down the laser a bit so that it doesn't char as much. And that's probably the one area that is a learning curve is we want the dialed laser to work faster, but it's not, we don't necessarily need it to work faster. It's not working faster. We don't want to overheat the tissue. So it's something that takes a, a little bit of practice to really uh, maintain the health of the tissue and get the final result that you want. You don't need charring to have sufficient vaporization uh, or cutting of the tissue. An electrosurge will obviously charge the area. So why laser dentistry? Well, there's tremendous benefits. We can charge for these procedures. It's incremental revenue through additional procedures that you may or might not do. Increased patient acceptance. This is high technology as far as the patients are concerned. They're amazed at the simplicity of the instrument, the size of the instrument. And um, as I mentioned earlier, oftentimes we can do these procedures without anesthetic. And so patients are just impressed. They're telling their family and friends, which can generate patient referrals. They're very efficient. We can, rather than doing uh, using retraction cords before our final impressions, the diode laser allows me to very simply eliminate the tissue over a margin in an area. And this allows for outstanding healing, as you'll see, and allows for just wonderful final impressions to be fabricated. Patient response has been amazing. It's a healthier approach to tissue management as compared to a scalpel or electrosurge. We don't have postoperative bleeding, very little postoperative discomfort. And really, there's very minimal need for anesthetic. Oftentimes, I will just use a topical anesthetic, and there is definitely reduction in post-operative discomfort to our patients. Again, most of you know that I place a lot of implants, and oftentimes we have to expose those implants, which means another cutting procedure. And the dental laser is really an effective and efficient way of treating our patients. So what are the advantages with the laser? We have minimal bleeding minimal post-operative discomfort, 
faster healing, no gingival recession if I'm doing gingival contouring. It's very precise and allows very good control, no tissue scarring, and it can assist with in treating of periodontal disease. Our hygienists love it for pocket areas or inflamed areas that have bleeding on probing. Using the dental laser is an efficient way of eliminating bleeding and probing over a period of time. So the results have been very, very predictable. And with this, the minor investment you're going to make, and, and again, most of you know that I love technology, as I mentioned earlier, but I love technology that we're able to use in our practice every day. And so this allows us to perform same day dentistry very, very efficiently and very effectively. So let's look at the benefits. The dialed laser can coagulate and cauterize the treatment area as you work, leading to immediate hemostasis, rapid healing, and reduced swelling. Here's the dental laser in our practice. You can see it's, again, it's about one and a half times the size of a Sharpie. Disposable tips, uh, get glasses for everybody in the operatory. And then we oftentimes, if we're going to cut, we will initiate the tip. We will char the tip or, or brown the tip by using a cork. This allows us to move a patient directly from a hygiene procedure to a same day restorative case with no wait time. You know, oftentimes our hygienists will, will create um, kind of a messy field for us, especially after scaling and root planing. And with the laser, we can trough for margins very, very effectively and stop bleeding of the gums and reduce any swelling that may have occurred. The Denmat dental laser is, is what we're using in our practice. As I mentioned, I've had several dialed lasers over time, but compared to a scalpel or electrocautery, you can see that we get excellent hemostasis. Uh, it's very safe around our titanium or metal components of around our implants. We don't have to worry about sparking. Oftentimes, it doesn't require any anesthetic. Oftentimes, I will use a topical anesthetic. Our post-operative discomfort is reduced swelling and discomfort postoperatively and preoperatively is reduced and we don't have to suture oftentimes so you can imagine the the time saving involved in, in our practice you know time is money so using a scalpel you know that it leaves open blood vessels and nerve endings on the edges of the wound and if we can eliminate that we can have a wonderful result blood vessels spill blood into the surgical site making it difficult to see it and requires sutures Nerve endings spill histamine into the surgical site, causing inflammation and post-operative pain for the patient. Compare it to a scalpel. The laser cuts, coagulates blood vessels, cauterizes nerve endings, and sterilizes wound edges. The coagulation allows us to work in a dry field, not having to do sutures. And by cauterizing nerve endings, we're stopping histamine release into the surgical site, reducing the post-operative pain and inflammation and we're sterilizing the wound edges, uh, eliminates the chance of infection. Electrosurge, I haven't used an electrosurge in a while in our practice, but you can't use it around metal, can't be used around crowns and bridges, implants, or dental instruments. It causes swelling, post-operative pain, and oftentimes recession. The laser is a photothermal device, so we can use it around metal. We can use the dialed laser around crowns and bridges and implants and it can be used in the treatment of periodontal disease. So it affects cell layers very, very minutely. We're not damaging tissue as we would with uh, electrosurge, and the zone of necrosis is very, very slight. Electrosurge oftentimes will take two to three weeks for the tissue to heal, and oftentimes we'll get shrinkage. We can't predict the amount of shrinkage that occurs when we use electrosurge or even with a scalpel. And the dialed laser allows me to recontour, prepare, and take an impression on the same day, all without the risk of recession. And this is really important in my cosmetic cases. So let's look at the applications in dentistry. We can use this dialed laser, and it has FDA clearance for cellular debridement of diseased fibrous tissue. As I mentioned, my hygienist, Stephanie and Dana, love this instrument. They can break down calculus subgingively, but also uh, decontaminate cellular areas. I use it for gingivectomies and gingivoplasties. I'll remove lesions, small lesions that we find, fibromas. Tissue retraction is something that I really like, use it a lot. It's very time-saving, cost savings. Aphthous ulcers and herpetic lesions, wait to see the results that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Uh, it's just remarkable. If any of you out there get cold sores, as soon as you feel that cold sore coming on, use the dialed laser 
and it affects the lesion almost immediately. And within a couple days, the lesion is completely gone. Uh, contouring gingival hyperplasia, crown lengthening, removing tissue over an erupting tooth, phrenectomies, and it helps me coagulate sites very, very well. Common procedures, laser troughing. Probably my number one that I use it for. Have you ever had a class five a preparation where you disrupted the tissue and it's bleeding, it's almost impossible to get a proper composite restoration uh, subgingival. I'll use that laser to coagulate the area so that I can immediately place my composite restoration. Gingival recontouring in our aesthetic cases, those minor gingival contouring procedures are made very efficient using the dial laser. Our orthodontist, when they want us to do phrenectomies, we can do these on young people with very little trauma, and it's kind of high tech, and the young people don't seem to mind it so much. Implant recovery. We know that if we bury an implant with a closure cap or, or cover screw, we have to excise the tissue over the top of those implants, and we normally would do that by anesthetizing the area then taking a tissue punch, causing more bleeding and trauma before we take our impression. And now I use the diode laser to uncover the site with little or no bleeding uh, afterwards. And though, again, uh, aphthous and herpetic lesions are eliminated in a very, very short amount of time. We'll talk about initiating tips and continuous mode versus uh, pulse wave mode. In periodontal, in our hygiene applications, the laser-assisted periodontal therapy can be used as an adjunct to traditional scaling and root planing. Laser energy selectively targets only darker necrotic tissue and leaves healthy pink tissue alone, allowing for better healing and results. Dental hygienists, our dental hygienists can also perform other procedures depending on the state law with a non-initiated tip. So they're not actually cutting tissue, rather they're decontaminating and debriding uh, sites. For laser bacterial reduction, we'll decrease the power wattage and not use a non-initiated tip. When we have a non-initiated tip, we're not cutting. We're simply kind of vaporizing. Sulcular debridement, uh, we'll turn up the power and again, use it in a continuous mode with a non-initiated tip. And we can also use it for desensitization. We had a patient today that had gingival recession and uh, root sensitivity. What do we do now in our practices? What do you do in your practices? Think about it. We, we you know, provide a Gluma, we provide Sensodyne toothpaste, but here we can actually use our, our dental laser, our diode laser to desensitize a particular area. What a cost savings, and you can charge appropriately for this. Surgical specialty surgical applications, we can do crown lengthening, we can lengthen crowns for proper bracket placement, we can remove tissue over non-erupted teeth. We can correct uneven gingival margins. And unlike an electrosurge, the dial lasers are safe to use around metal brackets and implants. These provide a bloodless dry field with little or no need for local anesthetic and therefore minimal patient discomfort. So we can use it by turning up the power with an initiated tip. And again, initiated, we're placing it in the cork to char the tip a little bit. And this is a cutting mode. We can remove soft tissue. And again, when we start charring the tissue as you're cutting it, it's very simple to reduce the power level to eliminate that. The only drawback that I see as we're using it is we want it to work very, very fast, like an electrosurge or scalpel, and you have to be patient with it. The results are amazing, but you have to be patient with the instrument. Here, laser troughing, going around a prepared tooth rather than using a retraction cord can give us very, very sharp, predictable margins with no tissue recession afterwards. And I think we've all seen that in our crown and bridge work. You know, we prepare now to the gingival line angle. We don't necessarily place our preparation subgingival to any degree. We don't have bleeding at our impression or very minimal bleeding. Really, there's no discomfort. If your power setting is set low enough, we don't need anesthetic. It's when you put your power level a little bit higher that I'll use a topical anesthetic. And we get really nice, crisp final impressions using this uh, diode laser. Retraction cord, you know, it's, it's time consuming. It can be challenging, especially if the tissue is very thin in a certain area. 
we definitely have to use anesthetic in most cases when we're using retraction cord. It takes time. You have to walk away, let it sit for a while. And with our dialed laser, we're getting predictable margins, no tissue recession, no bleeding or very little bleeding, no discomfort. And in my hands, it's a faster procedure and gives me very precise impressions. So we used our laser to trough. Here we're using the Denmat splash material, which, which I really like also. And we get a nice, clean, final impression in a challenging area to get an impression. So let's do the technique before we go into more clinical. When we want to cut, we want to initiate the tip. So we will have a little cork and we will simply turn the instrument on and go into the cork and it will darken the disposable tip. We can set the power to 0.6 to 1 watts in a continuous wave form. So that's a cutting setting. We're going to insert the tip approximately one millimeter below the hard tissue margin. The laser tip is placed parallel to the long axis of the tooth between the tooth and the sulcus. And then very slowly, we continue circumferentially around the tooth or until the area needed to be exposed and the margins and hemostasis is achieved. We'll simply wipe the area. I'll use a little Q-tip with hydrogen peroxide to remove the discolored tissue and visualize the margin better. And the procedure is complete when you can clearly see that the hard and soft tissue margins have been cleared away and bleeding is controlled. When we are using the diode laser, we want to be sure that we're using the optimum power setting for the patient tissue and pigmentation. Give the laser a second to fire up before starting with a slow brush-like stroke. All lasers are built with a slight firing delay. We wear your goggles. Be sure the laser power is delivered to the, in the continuous mode. Now, what's nice about this Denmat laser, along with the size, is that it has preset values on it. So it's very easy. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to go back to a book. It's just right on the side of the laser itself. We'll have the assistant blow air on the tissue and hold the high volume evacuator near the laser tip while lasing to keep the tissue cool. And we're going to use the appropriate power setting and use a light brush stroke to disperse heat and allow the laser to vaporize the tissue. So when you take your time, you're brushing it. This is where we don't have discomfort because we're, we're not allowing the, the tissue to heat up to a high level. If you're, you're getting charring or gingival recession, then you're using too high of a power or you're not moving the laser tip fast enough. Excess charring from excess thermal damage of collateral tissue leads to recession. So again, go slow, take your time, get the proper setting, and you'll get tremendous results. Phew, we went through that. So now let's look at some of the uh, clinical demonstrations. That's what we really want to see. You want to see what we're able to do. So dialed a uh, laser in troughing. Here we have a uh, tooth that we're going to do a crown preparation challenging area to some degree. We prepare the site. And those of you who heard me before, my implant margins are at or slightly subgingival. And with today's materials, our preparations are slightly subgingival. I know we have other work to do on other teeth in this situation. We'll be doing other crowns on this patient. But we prepare the tooth and we will use our diode laser. And here, these are all preset for us. This is for troughing. It's set at 1.4 watts. CW is continuous wave. And we'll simply have our cork and we will initiate the disposable tip into the cork. And we will simply very slowly, and you can see during the preparation, we had a little bleeding. We'll place the tip about a millimeter into the tissue between the tooth and the hard tissue or bone. And here I probably had the setting a little bit high, but you can see a little bit of charring and we'll take our Q-tip with hydrogen peroxide and we'll wipe that area clear and evaluate the margins. We'll then take our splash material, our light body, and then our heavy body splash material. And you can see we're able to provide a really nice clean impression with nice margins for our dental laboratory to fabricate the final crown. On seating three weeks post-op, we don't get gingival recession and we're able to seed our crown quite efficiently. Here's another area where we prepared some teeth and we're going to use the diode laser. And here you can see I was able to control with a little more experience, not allowing heat to generate and using the disposable tip around the tissue. 
and we can examine our margins, take our hydrogen peroxide and wipe them. And you can clearly see, especially the, the tooth on the right hand side, where you can see all those margins very, very clearly, very precisely. And we can take our final impression, which is very accurate. This takes a matter of minutes as opposed to using a retraction cord. And sometimes retraction cord is just very challenging to use because that tissue is so thin. We, we all go through the same process. Gingivectomies, another very, very useful aesthetic treatment for the use of the dental laser. If we're doing scaling and root planing and we have bleeding, we can bring the patient in, we can do our troughing very well and stop any bleeding. But with a gingivectomy, you can see we can reduce the power. It's in the continuous wave. We initiate the tip. We get very predictable results. We don't get tissue recession, no bleeding, no discomfort. And we can create wonderful symmetry in a very, very simple, effective method with the use of the diode laser. And these are results that we can achieve every day in our practice. As you know, phrenectomies, oftentimes everybody has a different technique, but if we use a scalpel, we'll have to put some sutures there. It's time consuming. It's a little scary to the patient. There's a lot of bleeding. We have to numb the area. With the diode laser, I don't use sutures. There's no bleeding, very little discomfort. As long as you're using the laser correctly and taking your time, we're in great shape. So I don't anesthetize the area. We decrease the power to 1.4 watts in the continuous wave format and we initiate the tip to cut. Implant recovery, as I mentioned, we do a lot of dental implants, as many of you may know. We can use the dental laser in this site very effectively. We don't have to worry about sparking or heating of the implant, and we can oftentimes do this procedure without any type of anesthetic, as long as you take your time and very little bleeding. You can see we're using the laser to expose the cover screw or closure cap, We'll remove it, we'll take our impression, and we'll get very, very nice healing in that area. And this is imperative, especially in the aesthetic zone. Our final results are very, very important. Bacterial de decontamination. This is an interesting case. We had a, a patient that was referred to me that had an implant that had purulence coming from it. And you can see in the radiograph that we appear to have some bone loss around the implant, maybe 40, 50% bone loss in the area. And so what we decided to do, you can see the tissue doesn't look very, very nice in that uh, upper right area. We're going to go ahead and excise the site so that I can see the infected implant. So we flap it and you can see the amount of granulation tissue and infected tissue. The implant itself is solid. So we wanted to see the results in this situation to see if we can salvage or save this implant, this ailing implant. And so we would curette, 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 try to clean out that granulation tissue to the best of our ability, circumferentially around the area. And then I would use the laser with an initiated tip to try to remove that granulation or to vaporize that granulation around that implant. And it's a process that has worked very efficiently and effectively, as opposed to trying to take a scaler and try to scratch that granulation away from that site. So we're working at removing and vaporizing that granulation area. Once it's clean, we're taking our grafting material and placing it around the implant with the hope that we will get some bone stimulation so that we can maintain the implant. Here we sutured the site with our Vicro sutures and I would allow that to heal. Two weeks post-op, we can see that the surgical site is distal. It's on the right hand of the screen. We buried the implant, but we started to get some bone regeneration around the coronal portion of that implant quite efficiently. Four months post-op, we will again uncover the implant as I showed you before. We'll initiate the tip. And we'll simply, that white there is not purulence, it's the membrane that we had placed. Without anesthetic, we can uncover the implant and simply replace that locator abutment into that site. And one week post-op, we get very, very nice healing around the implant. Uh, and we were able to maintain and salvage it quite effectively. 
Biostimulation. With biostimulation, we're not cutting the implant itself. Rather, we are trying to vaporize or, or to destroy the cells causing the aphthous ulcer or the herpetic lesion. And in this situation, we're not going to initiate the tip because we never touch the lesion itself. We're going to stay away from the lesion. So this is called low-level laser therapy. When spreading laser energy into the tissue, we're increasing the circulation, resulting in collagen formation. We're getting some osteoblastic activity and we're getting fibroblastic activity in that site. So for bacterial, laser bacterial reduction, aphthous ulcers, canker sores, herpetic lesions, we will use a non-initiated tip. When we initiate the tip, we're cutting. So that's used in gingival recontouring, phrenectomies, laser troughing, laser curettage, and soft tissue crown lengthening as we demonstrated. So the scattered energy results in biostimulation of the soft tissue, where the focus energy ablates tissue or cuts tissue. So let's look at this canker sore on the inside of the lower lip. So what we did is we set the power to 1.5 watts. It's in the pulse mode. What it, remember what we said the pulse mode was, it's not continuous, so it's on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. We have a non-initiated tip, and I'm not touching the lesion. You can see I'm away from the lesion. What the patient may feel is, there's no anesthetic, is a little tingly, like electricity almost going through it. And it, it will help kill the bacteria, the discomfort is minimal, and you if you've ever had one of these, you know how uncomfortable and, and painful these can be for our patients. It eliminates the, that pain nearly immediately, and it results in very fast healing with no anesthetic. One week post-op, and our patient was just amazed because he did get a lot of aphthous ulcers and was just amazed on how fast and efficient it was and the immediate reduction in that burning sensation or pain that they experience with an abscess ulcer. And you know these ulcers last seven to 10 days normally. Cold sores, if you can get your patient to come in at the first sign of discomfort or that burning where, you know, the patients know that they're getting a cold sore and it can be very, very hard. It can be a two week process. It's ugly, it's terrible, then it dries out. And you can see we have the laser set with a non-initiated tip. We're not touching the lesion, rather we're getting close. And again, what the patient's going to feel is some like, like tingly of the area. It's not painful, it's tingly. They'll almost describe it as feeling good, you know, in that area. So immediately post-operative and one week later, the, the lesion is completely gone and the patient did not experience the steps of a herpetic lesion of growing and growing and bursting. And they got an immediate response. As a matter of fact, this patient came back and said that you know, we should put up a sign on our main road that we treat uh, herpetic lesions on the lower lip because he said uh, we would be so busy treating patients with that. He was just amazed and was just thrilled with the result. A here we have a mucosal on the inside of the lip that we wanted to remove. And so here, again, when we're cutting, we're going to initiate the tip. And again, without anesthetic, I just went in and very, very slowly and carefully eliminated that mucosal quite efficiently and effectively. So with our traditional periodontal therapy, let's go into what our hygienists love about this laser. Number one, it's so easy to transport. It's just, it's the size of a Sharpie pen. Our hygienist uh, armamentarium consists of scaling and root planing, antibiotic treatments, flap surgeries. Those procedures can be painful, expensive, bloody, and oftentimes will require sutures. Laser-assisted periodontal therapy, will use it in conjunction with scaling and root planing. We want to reduce the bacterial count and then do our scaling and root planing and then do our laser curettage. And this procedure has proven to be very well accepted by our patients prior to a referral to our periodontist for more invasive procedures. We're able to reduce pocket depth. We're able to reduce bleeding on probing. And we've gotten some very, very nice results because of the reduction in the bacterial count and getting a much healthier periodontal situation for our patients. 
So here you can see, um, you know, the hygienist taking a perio probe and uh, you can see the pocket that is present in excess, maybe four or five millimeters. She's going to go ahead and use the laser in the non-initiated form to reduce the bacterial count in the area. It's in the pulse mode and the hygienists are able to do this. It reduces the risk of bacteria entering the bloodstream. She does not use anesthetic here, can soften calculus. And after a very short time, I think this in this situation, she brought the patient back in 10 days and you can see that our pockets went from maybe five to two millimeters in those areas. Uh, the tissue is much healthier and we've eliminated the bleeding on probing. And this is a wonderful tool because the patients are so responsive to this Star Wars, Star Trek type of technology in our practices. And the, the patient's responses have been very, very positive. I uh, hear another application where we have a significant pocket where she's using a non-initiated tip. And you can see we went from almost a deeper pocket and bleeding and probing to a minimal pocket in the area. This is bread and butter dentistry. And this is a bread and butter tool that is used quite efficiently and effectively in our practices today. Again, an another area where we have a deep pocket, bleeding and probing, and after using the diode laser, we're able to eliminate bleeding and probing and reduce the mesial pocket in this situation quite efficiently and quite effectively. There are uh, periodontal codes. You can get a, a coverage for these procedures, and that's important to us, obviously, because we are running a business, but it's an efficient way of treating the patients. It's a relatively not invasive way of treating our patients. And in a very short amount of time, you can pay for this product. And as I said in the very beginning, I love technology, but I only love technology that I can use. And that's financial rewarding for me. So, you know, you, you take it out of the box and it's really plug and play. There's 12 presets. It takes about five minutes to learn the system. Very, very convenient. All self-contained within the unit itself. It's wireless. The foot control is wireless. So easy to transport from room to room, weighs less than a standard drill. Three hours of a lasing time on every charge, three watts maximum power on continuous wave and five watts maximum power on pulse mode, delivering more than enough power for any soft tissue need. Just a wonderful, wonderful instrument to use. And as we talked about, these are the presets. We have a preset for aphthous ulcers or herpetic lesions, and it actually tells you how to treat it right on the instrument itself. We can do it as a biopsy, class five restorations. I did one today that the preparation was subgingival. We couldn't help but make it bleed. Normally, what would you do? You'd put a cotton or a two by two and sit there, let it sit for 10 minutes until it stopped bleeding. You can't do a restoration in a bloody field. We pick up the diode laser and in a matter of a minute, eliminated, coagulated that blood so I could do the restoration. Cuspid exposure, phrenectomies, gingivectomies, hyperplasia, implant recovery is something that I really appreciate. And I think I, my patients really appreciate in that we're not using anesthetic to uncover the uh, implant. Laser troughing, removing soft tissue over an erupting tooth, recontouring, a sulcular debridement. Again, our hygienists, we're actually probably going to purchase a second one because we're always fighting over the use of the uh, diode laser. So it can be used in a lot of applications in your practice very efficiently. It's cordless, and as you can see, four buttons, very easy to evaluate or see the presets, very easy to increase or decrease the power level depending on the pigmentation in the individual situation that we have. So thank you for listening. I hope I respected your time and I hope it's helpful.